Hi, I'm Redneck Computer Geek. Hopefully you can see speckles floating around behind me so you get an idea of the quality of the camera taking stuff in the background. So today we're going to be reviewing a Best Tecker 4K camera. I get a lot of requests from other YouTubers that are starting out on a good camera to start with and I really think that this is a great one if you're a how-to-er like I am or you're doing family videos and things like that. Oh, I can see speckles in the background over here. Um, so, what ended up happening was a series of unfortunate events that actually ended up causing me to end up with two of these Best Tecker cameras. And therefore, we're going to go and show you a Best Tecker review shot with a Best Tecker camera. On a side note, I ended up picking up Best Tecker's macro lens. It's their FS-1 lens. For macro it makes a big giant difference as far as doing up close video with this particular camera if you're doing how to's or you're doing anything that is up close within like say 10 uh, 10 to under four feet away you need one of these lenses for this particular camera that's what I'm shooting with currently um, when I originally got the camera it was pre Christmas and back then they were two hundred and nineteen dollars on Amazon and I ended up with another one and currently on Amazon as of the date this is posted they are $149.99 and well worth the money. The lens itself that you're going to need if you're doing how-to videos and you need the macro footage is another $40 right now. So let's take a look at what's in this package. So the case shows up, it's really, really small. Here's a cup of coffee for perspective. And there's a cup of coffee next to the lens for perspective. So, like I said, they're currently about 150 bucks right now. And they do have a three inch LCD lens that's on the side. There's a small little tab that you gotta cut here and cut on the other side to open the box. And for those of you who want all the spec list and everything, all the nitty gritty, down in the description I'll have a link to their Amazon page along with a copy and paste of all their specs. But basically, it's about the it's about the best that I could research and find under $200 4K camera that I could find. It also has 3x um, smart digital zoom, which I've actually found works really great when you're videotaping the kids off the front porch and stuff. Now, once we get the pretty case off, we've got this nice little area on the inside. Now in perspective, that looks as if I'm right into the lens. I'm actually over five feet or so away from it when I'm holding that up. So it comes in its nice little carrying pouch. I really like the way the pouch is designed. I like the case. I also like the fact that they use it as the packaging for the camera. So that you know that they're trusting it. The general USB cable. Now, one of the things that I noticed about the US... Oh, wait. This is the HDMI cable. Sorry. This is the USB cable. Now, the thing I noticed about the USB cable that was interesting is it doesn't use the regular mini. It uses this type. It's that kind of triangular pyramid mini USB. So that's interesting to note, is it doesn't use the regular mini. And of course, you've got this, which I have yet to use. It's a wireless remote for the system. I'm gonna have to set this up later and test it. The reviews on Amazon say it works great and that it definitely does the 25 to 30 feet away that they're claiming. Lens cap. Which I like, it comes with its own little cord in order to loop it off the camera and stuff. Now this here, this is the battery charger. And they work really nice. So it folds out kind of like one of those plug-in humidifiers and your batteries are right here. And the nice thing about the battery when it comes to these chargers is that it really clicks in nice, quick, easy, no fuss. Like that. And pop out. 
So on the fly, you're in a hurry, you need the battery, it pops in and out nice and easy. The one problem with that that I noticed was I had to make sure that this was mounted in a wall outlet that wasn't next to a door, wasn't next to kids' rooms, anything like that, because it does pop in and out so easily that it'll fall out just from getting bounced around. That's not Best Hector's fault. That's I have kids. Alright, so now the camera itself, which is what we're here for, obviously. Got the strap for the bag, pull the camera out, and it's double wrapped, nice bag, and I also like the fact that they used a bag that's slightly oversized, because what I've ended up doing now is I keep this bag and I put the camera back into it, and the other thing I've noticed is that the bag is actually so long that when you have this lens attached to it, it'll actually fit inside the bag. So keep this. Now, one thing Best Hecker needs to come out with is you went through the effort to make this to fit this. Now I need this. But what Best Hecker did, as far as that is concerned, is, and I don't really like this solution, but I'm going to show it to you anyway because I'm betting this is what they were thinking, is this here. And basically, the lens screws on to this in order to supposedly hold tight, and then this clips on to the bag. Okay, well, that's an interesting way to solve the issue. They also include this pleather bag that the problem is it is built so tight to the lens that once you get the lens out of it, you can't fit the lens back in it without having to like play the operation game and hope you don't set off a buzzer. So pulling out the camera. Now I am six foot one, I have really big hands, and what's interesting is that it's loose on the outside here. And if you try and tighten it up on the inside, there's almost nothing left for tighten up room because it's sewn, it's sewn in instead of being pulled through. Which I'm assuming was a security feature, they wanted to make it as strong as possible or whatnot, but it makes it so that you really honestly can never tighten up that strap. That's going to need to be fixed later. So, in order to get started, once you have it here, you're going to slide this and it's going to pop up your battery area. There we are. And you slide in one of your batteries into there. And it has this clip to one side that you have to pay attention for, see if I can do it on video. There's a clip on this side. You gotta push it over and then press in. And then it clicks in. So, another nifty feature that this has is it has a night vision option. I've actually used it multiple times in order to take a look at what's going on outside on my front porch and I've used it for many different how-to videos. I'll post up a quick little clip so you see what the difference is and stuff. Um, really love the infrared option and I love the LED option that's on the side here and I'll shoot some video with both of those. What I don't like is that because of where the infrared is mounted, if you have the lens on it, it actually shadows part of your video. About two-thirds of the video ends up with this slight shadow haze on it because the infrared ends up hitting the lens area. Just one of those design things you'll learn as you use it. Um, I like the selector across the back. It's nice to be able to switch between the photo mode, the, the regular mode, and all that. And the photo button is up here. 
which makes it really nice and easy to be able to punch while you're working on stuff once you have it flipped open. Um, it's slow to take photos. It's got an automated thing that sits there and tries to go and filter the photo and everything else. I've tried many different settings in order to fix that and it seems it just plain is what it is. But it's a video camera, so I'm not going to give it too much issue about photos. I actually end up using my Samsung S8 um, in order to take almost all my photos I post in my YouTube videos anyway. So, just a little whatever. So, this is your infrared button here in the center. This is your record that's over here. It's in a nice, easy to get to, comfortable location, as is the infrared. What's weird is that the LED, which you would have thought would have been a major thing, oh, see, it just turned itself on. Another feature that I like about it is that the moment you flip this screen open, it automatically turns on and switches into video mode if that's what you have it set for. Um, so if you want the LED, the LED button is actually hidden on the inside edge here. And that's because the LED is not very strong. It just kind of is a last resort type function on the camera. I think somebody just threw it in at the end of building the thing. But it's a nice function to have. And if you're, say, having to walk away from the camera and you don't want it sitting there turned on, the on button is this big giant one right in the center right here. Which is nice because then I can punch it on and off. And punch it back on when I get back to work on the project. As a parent with kids, that feature is invaluable. Thank you, Best Checker, for that feature. Um, I like that it's in there because I've worked with other cameras where the on-off switch was back here. And if you're having somebody else punch the buttons in order to go and help you start a video, they end up accidentally hitting it. So I like that it's stuck inside there where there's no way somebody can hit it. And I like the fact the record button is a big, giant, you can't miss it record button. Um, one problem that I have with the buttons on this, which is just one of those learning as you go type things, the button on it takes a lot of force. And so you need to have a really good tripod underneath this thing when you go to push the button in order to start recording. Um, I tried it on a cheap tripod, and you literally have to push hard enough the tripod starts to tip. I have one of the Amazon 60-inch tall tripods that it's on right now, and I love those. I'll post a link for that down in the description. A lot of people ask me about tripods also. So, that's the end of our babbling part of this review. Now we're going to take this thing, it's fresh straight out of the package, I'm going to throw an SD card into it, oh by the way, the SD card actually goes right here, into that little slot there. Um, Best Tucker does recommend a Class 10 SD card, and it does make a difference running Class 10 in these. Um, I tried some older cards in it, just to see whether that was one of those sales gimmicks, and it did not like my older 4 and 8 gig cards. The other thing is, is, if you're shooting in the 2K option, which is what this camera is in right now, rather than 4K, if you're shooting in the 2K option that's offered in this Best Tucker, you are going to need a 32 gig card. A 32 gig card on, two, on 2K shoots about two and a half hours worth of video, which is just about awesome because the battery life on this thing is basically only about two and a half hours. So 32 gig equals maximum battery life and maximum recording basically on your 2K whatever option. Now let's go take some footage. Uh, yet again, I'm going to set this on the 2K option when we go take the footage. 4K just is way overkill for what we need in this situation. Especially if you're shooting how-tos, a lot of that you're going to shoot in 1080p. And the reason for that is because in 1080p, you can shoot at 60 frames per second and be able to speed up and slow down the frames a lot better. And it works just better for doing how-tos. So let's go take some footage and go from there.
Riley, say hi. Hi, right, so we're shooting with just the regular best tecker right now. We'll see whether Speckles wants to go and play on camera. Speckles is my Oscar. She's around 10 inches long or so. And as you can see, it does okay with picking up inside the tank. It does catch some sun glare. If we come over here, this is Biggie, our parakeet. Let's see if we can zoom in on Biggie through the bars. Biggie! Alright. There we go. And let's go shoot some outside. Alright, so right now we're shooting without the macro lens, just the basic video camera. We're up on my porch and over to the side over here, you might be able to go and hear the sound of a car running. That's my wife's Hyundai. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk down through here as best we can. And we're going to come around and go into the garage. And the reason for that is because a lot of digital cameras have issues with transitions. So there's the snow glare coming across. We had a fresh snow last night. I'm going to have to go plow soon. And we're going to try a transition. We're going to go in. Here we are. Now that's regular sunlight. And we're going to turn on the other lights. That wasn't too bad. Now, this camera comes with an infrared. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn off the lights. And I'm going to turn on the infrared. And what we're going to do is walk over into the other area. And as you can see right now, the camera sees nothing but dark. I'm aimed at a set of shelving, but you wouldn't know that. Infrared, there is all your shelving. And infrared off. And now the awkwardly placed LED. Now what's interesting is, if the LED is on, you get this icon on the screen. You can punch the infrared, and it keeps both on at the same time. And then you can turn the LED off, and then infrared off. So there you go, that's a demonstration of that. I use it in a lot of different how-to videos at this point. See, that's that glare thing, that transition. That's your outside light versus inside light. Hey, we'll go see if we can see some chickens. Get some action in here. So, right now, I'm about 30 feet away from the chicken coop, and we're going to try the zoom on the chicken on the coop. So that's regular zoom. That's digital zoom. Back to regular. And all the way out. So as you can see, there's my plow truck. And I'm right in this area here. Not too bad. Let's go bug some chickens. Anybody home? <laughs> there we go. And as you can see, there's an up close of some action moving stuff. And we're going to see if we can get this plug plug back in. So you can see some more up close. And of course, it's got to be going the wrong direction. There we go. 
All right, let me see if I can flip it around. Now, the screen does turn all the way so you can selfie. Now, I'm six foot one. This is currently out on the end of my arm, just as far as I can possibly hold it. So as you can see, it cuts off most of my head while I'm trying to talk to you right now. Let me turn, that sun is really glaring. There we go. Now we got the sun coming across my face, so you can see that a little bit better. So, that's my review on this Best Tecker, so you get some different perspective on it. Um, I've got other clips of the kids and some work clips and stuff like that. And there you go. Have fun, guys. And I do recommend this camera for basic YouTubers, how-to videos. But on the how-to videos, you got to have that macro lens. It makes a big, giant difference. Take a look at my last couple of videos in order to go and see some more footage that was shot with this camera. Have fun, everyone.